My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now I recently found that the shape of the boat as she is now is quite different to the way she was designed. And that's due to several things but mainly through misuse over the years, damage, rebuilding and so on. So I decided to fully loft out the boat which means scaling up and drawing out the plans for the boat full size, the same size as the boat. And that's in order to get them fair and to get templates for the frames of the boat which will dictate her shape and bring her back to the shape that she was designed with. I started lofting in a previous video which explains a bit more about what the point of the process is and the basics of understanding the boat plans. Now this video might be a little bit more technical than most of mine but watching the previous video will help if you haven't done already. And I'm really just figuring out this lofting process myself because I've never done it on anything like this sort of scale before. So hopefully I'll be able to talk you guys through it as I learn the process myself and put it into practice. So as I'm lofting the plans for the boat, I have the ability to bring the shape back to how she was originally designed and I can manipulate and modify the hull as I rebuild it to fit that new but original shape. However, the one part that I don't want to change or manipulate is the lead ballast keel because I really don't want to get into recasting that. So what I'm going to do is take measurements off the ballast keel and I'm going to draw the ballast keel as it is in reality onto the lofting floor. So I'm just measuring the top and the bottom of the lead ballast keel on each station here and that's going to help me replicate it on the lofting floor inside. 15, that's 12 and 3 quarters on top. And to measure the bottom, I'm using this little contraption. It's a sort of amalgamation of a couple of old school sliding bevels and a long ruler. Because the bottom of the keel is rounded on the bottom corners, it's very hard to measure it. I'm drawing that ballast keel onto the lofting floor. Now I've already put the nails in and laid down the batten for that curve. But this curve, of course, uh, I can't adjust very much because it's not what I'm proposing to build, it's actually what's out there already on the ballast keel, which I can't change. And then I've got to fare that lead keel into the rest of the centre line. So effectively, I've drawn the piece that I'm working around onto my floor, so that as I loft the boat, I can take that into account and make sure that all the other lines fare into the ballast keel as it is now. Now all these changes are quite subtle, we're talking about a quarter of an inch here, half an inch there, and those are the sort of amounts you'd expect to be changing as you loft a boat anyway, due to the discrepancies in the drawing and so on. But they have to be done right, because if one line isn't fair with the rest of the lines, it, a half an inch is going to make a huge difference when you're looking at the boat. The next step is to start work on the body plan, which is this part of the drawing, showing the cross sections of the boat as seen from a head or a stern. And the first thing we're going to do is draw on the buttock lines, which in the body plan are these vertical lines here, and the diagonals, which are these lines. Now remember, the buttock lines, which are vertical here, and horizontal on the half breadth plan, are these curved lines in the profile plan. And the diagonals are shown on the other side of the half breadth plan as these curved lines here. So uh, I got Francesca back. Check her, here she is. Hello. <laughs> She's hopefully going to be here for a while unless I scare her away. No, can't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> How is it being out here? It's good. Getting settled in, but I'm hungry. And yeah. the pasta's still on. Oh. So. <laughs> okay. Supper's ready. <laughs> Supper is ready. <laughs> Cause you want me to be your dog But I won't let you know And I want you to believe in me But I won't let you go Alright, now we've drawn on the reference lines for the buttock lines and the diagonals. I'm nearly ready to start drawing the stations in on the body plan. First I've got to make some marking staffs and a baseline and centerline battens. And these are going to give me a quick, easy and accurate way of transferring measurements between the three different plans I've got on the floor here.
Checkers watching the World Cup and screwing down batons. These are my marking staffs, which I just made out of 2x4. The purpose of them is to be able to easily transfer measurements between the three different plans that I've got on the floor. Because I've now drawn the shear line as a fair line, I want to take any further measurements of the shear off of that line I've already drawn, rather than off the plans on the paper. So I'm going to be transferring the heights of the shear from the baseline onto the body plan. But rather than using a ruler to measure them, I'm going to use these staffs. All I'm going to do is lay it down where I want to take the measurement. I can butt it against the baseline batter and I'm going to mark the height of the shear line and I'm going to use a different colour for each different sort of measurement. So all the shear line measurements I'm going to use red. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to mark that as station 12. I'm going to transfer these as horizontal lines onto the lofting floor in roughly the right place that they'll line up with the top of the sections in the body plan. So now I've taken the heights of the shear and the heights of the bottom of the keel and the rabbit line and I've transferred those heights all onto the body plan area. Now I want to get the half breadth widths of those same things and transfer them to the body plan. So I'm going to now take the width of the shear line and the keel from the half breadth plan, which remember is the drawing of the boat as seen from above or below. So this line is the top of the lead ballast keel, as measured from the actual keel outside. And we're on station 10, so I'm going to write 10 next to it. Bottom of the lead keel is on this side in a different colour, and that's 10 as well. So now comes the clever bit. Now I can transfer these half breadths onto the body pan by taking my measuring staff, laying it against the centre line staff, and then just ticking off the same marks on the lines that I've already made for the measurement of the heights of the shear and the keel on each station. It makes more sense when you're actually doing it and hopefully it'll make more sense when it's finished uh, to me and you. <laughs> this line is the centre line looking from the bow or the stern. This is the height of the shear line at the first station, this line. And this mark is the half breadth or the width really of the shear at the first station. So if I put that here and mark that off so that's going to give me a point for the top of the first station on the shear line. So now I just do the same on all the other lines. Now I'm going to do the same with the top and the bottom of the keel. She danced until her stockings were torn. Danced all night to the early morning. Prettier girl I've never seen. Danced to the fiddle in the middle of the street. So I spent all day today dealing with some unexpected and slightly frustrating problems very hard to explain concisely but basically there's some uncertainty about how the shear comes into the stem at the bow of the boat. Now this part of the half breadth plan that I'm working on is actually incomplete on the drawing that I've got so it's slightly open to interpretation so I've been looking at some old photos of the boat and I've been taking some measurements off those photos so I'm actually adjusting the lines that I've already drawn now but I think the result that I've come to is going to be the most sympathetic towards both the way the boat was built originally and the way she was designed as Albert Strange drew her. I went over to ask for a dance. She held out her sweet little hand. Come now, darling, what's your name? Wouldn't you like to dance in the rain? All right, so I've now uh, marked down the distances out of the stations on the body plan on the water lines. And I've just laid down one baton here just to check a few things. But before I start marking, fairing and drawing, all the stations on the body plan, I need some more reference points to get a more accurate shape. So I'm going to use the buttock lines and the diagonals and the lines plan to put some more points on this curve. Now as the table of offsets that I've got from Albert Strange doesn't include measurements for the buttock lines or the diagonals, I'm going to be taking those measurements off the lines for drawing and adding my own section to the table of offsets. So there are six diagonals on this drawing at the moment, but I've noticed there's an area right here 
there's quite a big space without a diagonal and there's also no point of data from a water line or from a buttock line and this is a quite a critical area in the curve because it's so subtle and it's almost flat so I'm going to add in an extra diagonal here so all I'm going to do is just measure carefully where I put it and uh, choose it somewhere where it can easily be transferred onto the lofting floor and now I've moved onto the lofting floor and working one station at a time I'm going to put all these measurements onto the floor with nails the waterline measurements and the diagonals and the buttock lines that I've just taken and then one by one I'm going to fare each of those body plan sections in using the baton adjusting the position of the nails where necessary and that's going to give me the four and a half cross-sectional shape of the outside of the hull on each station. So as I'm working my way down the station here, I'm banging in a nail on each of my offsets. Some of those offsets are on the water lines, it's the horizontal distance out from this center line. Some of the offsets are on the diagonals, which are these blue lines, and some of the offsets are on the buttock lines, which are the green lines, and that's the vertical distance up from the baseline. They're not always exactly equally spaced, sometimes you might get two or three marks in a similar place. Uh, but that's just a good way to check your errors anyway. Sometimes, like right here, they're pretty much in line. Sometimes they're not. Then you just have to check the lines drawing again and make sure none of them is an obvious uh, error in measurement or calculation. And if they're all fairly accurate as per the lines, then you just have to take the middle ground or whatever fits in with the fairest curve. Normally, you'd probably start this process uh, from the first station, which would be the bow. I've actually started from the middle and then I'm working forward from the middle to the bow and then I'll start on the after stations and I've done that because I wanted to see right at the beginning how it would work to fare in the old ballast keel which is out there on the boat uh, into the lines and the place where that is the most different is in the middle of the boat so around station 12 and 13 and the good news is uh, it fares in pretty well there's really not a very big difference between the lead keel out there and the line drawings. So now I've finished drawing all the sections on the body plan for the forward half of the boat and now I'm going to start on the after half of the boat. So now I've drawn all the sections out on the body plan, it's time for me to start fairing the lines on the other plans, so the half breadth and the profile view. Now there's three sets of lines to fair in, there's the buttock lines, the diagonals and the water lines. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, it kind of depends on the hull shape a little bit. On the boat of this sort of shape the diagonals are particularly useful and the water lines are going to be more useful in the 
top section of the boat, the top sides, and the buttock lines will be useful in the after part of the boat where the shape flattens out and underneath the stern. So now I've marked out the horizontal distance out from the centre line of every station on waterline one. These are the marks on my marking staff. And now I'm going to take these same distances and mark them off the baseline here on the half breadth plan. And that'll give me this waterline of the boat as it would be seen looking from above. So normally on a lines plan you'd have the width in the half breadth plan of the bottom of the keel and the outside of the rabbit. But for some reason, Strange didn't put the rabbit in the half breadth plan, so I haven't got any width for the rabbit, I've just got the height of it in the profile view. So I've got away with that up until now, but now I'm going to need the width to complete the water lines which come into the rabbit. Now I've drawn out all the stations on the body plan, I can measure the width of the rabbit at the heights that I know it's going to be. So I can take those measurements off the body plan and then create the line for the rabbit on the half breadth plan. All right, well, I've laid down uh, the first water line here, and it's actually lining up pretty well. Uh, there's just a couple of stations where there's a very slight adjustment needed on the body plan, so, uh, so far, so good. Now the diagonals, when they're drawn on the half breadth plan, um, they're usually drawn the opposite way to the water lines, just so they don't get too confusing. So I've got to choose a centre line for the half breadth plan and then lay off the diagonals from there. First of all, of course, I've got to take a marking staff and mark off each section on the diagonal that I'm going to be working on. So this is Mark. Uh, he's Australian. I am. A young shipwright, very competent, and he's come to help me for a few days. Where have you come from just now? From Canada, but I'm on a world boat building tour, so I'm from South Sydney, Australia, and I finished my apprenticeship 12 months ago, and I thought I'd do my journeyman years overseas, get as much experience as I can. Right, well I've now got five diagonals fared out on the floor. I've got three water lines as well as the shear line. What I'm going to do at this stage is uh, take the points back off the water lines, back off the diagonals, take them back to the body plan and what I'll be doing is adjusting the lines of the body plan to go closer to those points or through them. Now probably once that's happened I'm going to be coming back to the um, water lines and to the diagonal lines on the half breadth view here and be adjusting them again. Now I've never actually lofted anything this size with this degree of accuracy before so I'm just figuring it out and what I'm realising really is I probably should have not done all of the sections on the body plan at the beginning because it's a circular process you do one bit and then you go on to fair those lines in from a different view and then you go on to fair those lines in from another view and you just keep going around you end up back with the first view changing the lines you originally drawn and then each step everything gets a little bit closer to being fair in all dimensions. So drawing all the sections or all the lines in one particular view at the beginning isn't necessarily an advantage although some would say it's the safest way to get as close as you can to the way it was drawn on the plans. So anyway I'm going to um, Take my marking staff and on each station I'm going to mark off the water lines and the diagonals that I've fared out. I'm going to take them back to the body plan, I'm going to tick them off on the body plan and adjust those body plan sections as much as I need to to try and fare them into everything and then like I said probably come back here to adjust these again. So do you want to tick off number 10? Sure.
So what we're doing now is we're taking all the measurements off of the water lines and the diagonals that we've laid down fair on the half breadth plan, taking those measurements out at each frame and bringing them back to the body plan. Now, because those lines have been fared out, that means that the points of reference on the body plan have now moved, some of them, not all of them. But what we're doing is trying to fare the body plan to the new points of reference and hoping that they line up in relation to each station. Now, rather than rub each station line out on the body plan and draw it again, I'm just doing it in a different color because this is the tedious bit about lofting. We're probably gonna have to go around this process several times possibly to get it really nice and fair. So these might not be the final body plan lines. Um, we may have to refair in the longer lines on the half breadth plan and then come back to the body plan and do it again. So if I do it in a different color, it just means I don't have to rub out until I know that I'm doing the final version. Alright, well it's time for me to stop lofting and start editing this video. And it's a little bit frustrating to be honest that I haven't got further in the lofting process. I was hoping that I'd be finished by now. But I have to try and remember that lofting can be a tedious process and that it's a really important process to get right and to take your time over. So I'm not going to rush it. Because even if this process was to take a month, in the grand scheme of things, considering the impact this will have on the boat, that's really no time at all. And when I'm looking back on this stage, when I'm finally sailing the boat around, it will seem like a blink of an eye and I'll be glad I did it properly. I also have to remember to be grateful that I actually have the opportunity and the space and the time to do this properly. It's not often, honestly, that a boat of this size and especially this heritage is really lofted out in full like this these days. So I'm really happy that I've been able to learn and I'm still learning this process in what I think is the best way possible, which is just by doing it. And all the experts that I've spoken to to get advice while I've been doing this lofting have all said the same thing, which is that it takes a lot of time to loft well, but if you want the result to be authentic to the drawings, then it's important to take that time and do it properly. So I'm looking forward to getting this finished, but I'm not gonna rush it, and I'm gonna make sure that I do as good a job as I possibly can on it. I looked at the clock, it was 12.05 Come on, brother, pat the decks, do some jive Do the night out boogie I do the night out boogie I do the night out boogie Boogie till the break of day Oh, boogie, pat boogie Alright, well that's it for now folks, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It really does make a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to film and edit these videos, so thanks again. And I'll see you all next time when I really hope I will have got to the end of this lofting and will be picking up some tools again. Alright, cheers! It was one twenty two. Come on, Dr. John, what's the matter with you? Do the night out, boogie. I do the night out, boogie.